This is Jabber Tech, and today I'm going to do a quick review, a quick kind of comparison between these two great smart slash fitness watches. This of course being the Garmin Phoenix line, and this of course is the brand new Sunto 7, which is a Wear OS device, but Sunto has been making fitness watches for quite some time, so they have a little bit of knowledge in this space. If you're interested in either one, or perhaps both of these watches, check my link description below because I've done full reviews on both of them. But let's get into this quick comparison of the Phoenix line versus the Sunto 7. something a little bit different. This is going to be a review for the average person because if you are a super athlete, if you are somebody who trains every single day of the week, chances are you have a Garmin device or maybe you have something else that you've connected your chest strap to, you've connected your power meter, you've connected your dynamics pod, whatever you connected it to, you probably have a Phoenix or some other type of athletic watch. The Sunto 7 is a Wear OS device, which means you really can't connect much to it. There are some chest straps that you can connect to it, but really only a handful of them will work, so it's not even worth mentioning. I am not a super athlete at all, guys. I just like smart watches. I like fitness watches. I like being able to track my activities, and both of these watches are excellent, but both of these watches have some pluses and some minuses as well. This is what the Sunto 7 will look like on the wrist. Both of these watches are big watches. Neither one of them is a tiny watch. And now this is what the Garmin watch will look like on the wrist. Again, neither one of these watches is a small device, so just make sure you know that. The one advantage Garmin has is they have so many different models, they have so many different sizes, that if this is too big for you, you probably will find one that fits your needs. Sunto 7 is, you like it or you don't, and it is what it is. Both of these watches have the modern comforts that you'd expect. Both of them allow you to pay with them, so you have NFC for mobile payments. One is with Garmin Pay, and the other one is with Google Pay. Both of these watches also are water resistant. Both of these watches also allow you to connect a Bluetooth headset. And both of these watches allow you to transfer your own music to, so you don't have to have an active internet connection to listen to music. Both of these devices have watch faces for days that you can transfer. And both of them generally look really, really good. I think so anyway. Both of these watches have replaceable bands on the back, so you can change it up. You can add your own style. I will say that the Garmin watch has a lot more options in terms of watch bands than the Sunto 7. Both of the watches also have Wi-Fi. Again, they're modern watches. They're $500 plus watches, so they pretty much have all the comforts that you'd expect from a high-end wearable. In terms of fitness tracking, both of these watches are going to track just about everything that you'd ever want it to. Now, one of the things that the Sunto 7 does not have, it does not have sleep tracking. That's not a huge deal to me because I'm not really one to track my sleep, but I know a lot of you do. So if you pick up the Sunto 7, there might be some third-party applications that'll help you with that sleep tracking goodness. But it is not built in. Is it? It is not an official app from Sunto, so it is what it is. Garmin device will also track how many flights of steps you've climbed. For some reason, the Sunto 7 does not. But putting that aside, in terms of GPS accuracy, both of them were pretty much on point. Now, the GPS is a little bit iffy where I am. I'm here in New York City. GPS can be a little bit of a struggle because of all the high buildings and whatnot. But if you are in an open field, if you are somewhere where you don't have a ton of skyscrapers, both of these locked on very, very quickly. And both of them were super accurate as well, at least in my testing. One might have been off, but the other day the other one was off, so it really was a crapshoot, and we're only talking about two tenths, maybe three tenths of a mile. So again, it is what it is, guys. I'm in an area where there's a lot of interference. Both of these watches use optical heart rate sensors. Now, they were really good. Both of them were pretty much spot on with each other. Neither one of them was way off that I had to take a second glance. Maybe a beat or two off, but again, the Phoenix watch will allow you to connect chest straps and other contraptions too. So if you want a more accurate heart rate monitoring watch, heart rate monitoring fitness watch, Garmin would be your choice. So let me just start off with the Garmin line, and I just want to tell you that the Garmin Phoenix line, this happens to be the 6X, but this review will hold true for the 5X and the 5X Plus as well, because those devices are more in line with the $500 price tag of the Sunto 7. This is a little bit more expensive, but they are just about the same. So for the purposes of this review, I'm just going to mention this as a Phoenix device, but you guys know this is the Phoenix 6. Now what I like about Garmin is they really make a very nice watch. I think this is a very handsome watch. I think they did a nice job. They, they really made the software work very well with the device. So in terms of battery life, you'll get about, let's say, two to three weeks of battery life if you're training hardcore, if you're an athletic beast. You'll get less than that, but for the average person, you'll get about two weeks, and I think that's awesome. This does not have a touch screen. This is a trans-reflective screen, which means that in direct sunlight, you'll be able to see everything that's on your wrist, and you get a whole bunch of information. There's so many stats. There's so many 
So much data that the Garmin Phoenix line gives you, it's not even funny. If you learn something new about your training and your metrics, the Garmin line will probably tell you just about everything you want to know. This is not a touchscreen again, so you cannot interact with it. It doesn't have a speaker, it doesn't have a microphone. Its main function is to be your fitness partner, to really get you in shape and to really help you out. But if you're not training all that much, if you just want a great smartwatch, to get notifications on, if you want a smartwatch that you can download music to, the Garmin device is an excellent choice as well. And you do have ways that you can interact with different, different fields. So for the weather, if you click on it, you can get kind of like an hourly forecast, a daily forecast. So it gives you more information than just about your athletic abilities. But you also can set up things, you can set up these widgets, you can see a lot of information. Right now I'm detraining. If you click through, it'll tell you what your VO2 max is, it'll show you what your load is, your seven day load. A lot of information about your activity. Now again, the Garmin gets smarter and smarter and learns a lot more about you as you continue to use it. So this is a watch that you will wanna wear every single day because if you don't wear it for a couple days, it's gonna lower your step count, it's gonna learn less information about you. And I think Garmin did a great job of really making sure that we wanna wear this watch every single day. And if I show you guys the app, proof is in the app as well. Software team behind Garmin's Connect app did a really nice job. I think everything just looks very pleasing to the eye. So even if you don't know what something means, if you just click on it, you'll be able to tell exactly what's going on. So if we go to my stress meter here, you can see that my overall stress is 29. I think that's pretty low. And you can scroll through and pretty much see just about every single day what your stress level has been. And if you don't know what something means, there's usually a little icon that you can click on and it'll explain what exactly is going on. So if you take your time, if you really understand what's going on with the watch, spend like a week to figure out every single detail about it. It'll give you a ton of information. And again, Garmin really makes it such a way that you do have to wear this watch every single day if you wanna get the most out of it, if you want the watch to learn what you're actually doing, what your fitness level is, you do have to wear it every single day. And what I like about them is they actually make it fun and interesting. You can have a step challenge that you automatically can opt into every single week, and it'll just let you know where you are and you can compete against people from around the world or people that you know you can create create separate challenges for running, for biking, just about any activity that's on here. The social aspect of the Garmin watch is another reason how Garmin keeps you wearing this watch. So overall guys, in terms of just a watch for the everyday, just a watch for the everyday person, because of the social aspect, because of the way the watch actually learns more about you the more you wear it, I can really recommend this even if you're not a super athlete. I can almost guarantee you guys if you buy the Garmin Phoenix watch or basically any Garmin out there if it's a forerunner or whatever Garmin best suits your needs and your budget, you're really going to want to use it every day and chances are I think you're going to start exercising a lot more because it is fun to see your progress over the weeks, the months and even the years and Garmin makes it very fun, very enjoyable to do. For that I give Garmin a huge thumbs up. I think they have a great advantage over other smartwatches and fitness watches because not only do they give you just about every metric that you're going to want to use, you can also connect just about every accessory that you're ever going to find to this watch and the social aspect just makes it fun. Let's talk about the pluses of the Suunto 7. The plus really is you have Wear OS on this device, you have the Google Assistant, you have your Google Feed right over here, and it is a touchscreen, so that just makes it a lot easier to use. Just makes it more fun and more enjoyable to use when you're not working out, because, well, when you're not working out, you still want to use your watch, you still want it to be helpful, you still want to be able to enjoy your $500 device. Just being able to scroll through and interact with the watch with your finger just makes it a lot easier, especially when you're on the go. But in Garmin's defense, when you are working out and you get a little sweaty, the touchscreen just does not work as well. So having buttons on the side is a great way to interact with the watch when you're working out, but you can also do that with the Suunto 7. In terms of the social aspect, Suunto does it a little bit differently. What you can do, you can change a heat map on your watch face, and I think this is the coolest thing about the Suunto 7. I haven't changed this watch face, and if you're not new to my channel, you know I usually change watch faces on a daily basis. Changing the heat map will show you where most people run in the area that you're in. When you connect this watch to the charger, it will download maps for you automatically and free, and that's a huge plus for the Suunto 7. It just means when you're in a new area, you can go in and find out where people are running, where people are biking, swimming, or whatever the case may be. You'll be able to find that out very easily on the Suunto 7. But the fact that you have a touchscreen on the Suunto 7, again, just makes it a lot easier to interact with different things. 
So you can click on your weather, for example, like I showed you on the Garmin watch, and you'll be able to see a nice graphical representation of what's going on. And you can also just ask Google questions by saying the magic Hey G keyword, or you can click on that microphone at any time to bring up your assistant. Both of these watches have offline maps, but again, using a touchscreen is just a lot easier to navigate through. Now, in terms of the application, I think Sunto does a nice job. You can integrate it with Google Fit and you can integrate your workouts, I believe, with Strava. But really, the Sunto app gives you a lot of information here. So if you look at it, you can see your history. You can see a nice graphical representation with the GPS tracking where you've been. So this was my last run. You can see I ran along the water. And if you go in, you can see a lot of statistics as well. You, get, you don't get as many statistics as you would from a Garmin watch. But again, for the average person, I think you get a lot more than you would on any other Wear OS device. And for the average person, I think this is just about all the information that you'd need. There's your recovery time, your PTE score, you also get your Epoch score right over there. And Sunto is trying to make it interactive, they're trying to make it fun like Garmin does. So you can see other people's runs if you share it publicly. If you don't want to share your runs or your stats, you can keep it private or you can share only with your friends. But you can go in here and you can see where people are actually doing activities. So for example, let's check out Sam Levy. I don't know who he is, but looking at his map, it looks like he probably went cycling around the big loop of Central Park. And if we take a look at it, you can see his score. You can see all of his stats over there. Again, you do have to share this publicly. This will not just upload to the cloud without your permission. You can see all of his laps here. You can see everything. And if you really like what Sam has done, you can save his route. So the next time you're there, you can do the same thing. You can do a ghost target, so you're trying to beat him, or you can just start following his route. Sunto is trying to make this more of a social interactive type of application, but I think Garmin takes the win for that. They really make it a lot of fun. As of right now, we don't have any challenges that we can join in every single week, but Sunto does push out some updates to their application, so hopefully we can get something like that. So now again, if we go into your calendar, let's just go to the year view. You get these nice little dots and it shows you when you hit your target, when you hit your goals, when you exercised, when you did it. Show by the year. You can show by the week. I've been slacking. You can show by the month. You can see everything about it. You can see your total distance. You can see your total calorie for, say, the year. Or if you switch it again for the month. So I think Sunto does a good job. They're just not there as of yet, but they are working on it. I think they have a... I think they're on the right track. I think they're doing a good job, but the social aspect king definitely goes to Garmin. Again, this could all change by the time you watch this video, but I think but I think Sunto's doing a good job. I think for what the watch is, it's a really nice watch. With Wear OS, you can easily transfer music. You can do the same on Garmin. It's just not as seamless. It's just not as easy to do from your phone. You do need a cable to plug in your Garmin and transfer your own tracks. You can do it wirelessly on the Sunto 7. Sunto 7 has apps that you can download to the watch itself. Now both of these watches will get notifications on them, but because the Sunto has a microphone and the Garmin doesn't, you can easily dictate a response to say a text message from your wrist using the Sunto 7. On the Garmin device, you can set up preset replies, but you can't dictate anything. And both of these watches don't have speakers, so you cannot make any phone calls. Both of these watches you can connect a Bluetooth headset to, so you can leave your phone at home, download your tracks, and go for your workout. One thing that Sunto doesn't have, and I don't know understand why they don't have it, maybe I just didn't find the right setting, but I doubt that's the case. Let me know down in the comments below if you own this device. But for every mile that you've run, Garmin will give you a little update if you have a Bluetooth headset connected to it. For example, it'll tell you mile one and tell you what your pace is. The Sunto 7 does not do that. You get a little vibration letting you know that you've completed your next mile. But for some reason, connecting a Bluetooth headset to it, it won't give me that audible kind of update. And that's something that I do miss. And that's something that could be addressed in a software update. The Sunto, you will have to charge every single day, whether you work out or whether you don't. Maybe you'll get a day and a half, but that's about it. So I think the battery champion definitely is the Garmin device. But again, don't just choose one of these watches solely for battery. You might have an awesome watch with a ton of battery, but you might not enjoy it as much as a watch that you have to charge every single day. So at the end of the day, guys, it really comes down to which one you think you'll enjoy more often. Again, having a watch that lasts two or three weeks, if you don't really enjoy it, it's just going to be a brick on your wrist. Having a watch that you have to charge every day, but you absolutely love using every single day, the battery charging problem is not an issue. If you really enjoy it, it just becomes one of those devices that you charge your phone at the end of the night, you charge your watch, and it is what it is. But I don't think you could go wrong with either one of these watches. Now, if I had a choice between either one, 
I really couldn't tell you guys because I do switch between these every single day. There are days that I just want the modern comforts of a touchscreen. I just want the modern comforts and ease of Wear OS on my wrist. And then there are other days that I get challenged by friends and I put on my Garmin watch and I go out and go for runs. So again, it just depends on which watch you think better suits your needs. And I sadly, I can't tell you which one is better because neither one of these watches is the perfect watch. There is no perfect watch out there, only a perfect watch for you. If you have any questions about either one of these watches, let me know down in the comments below because I'm always happy to try and help you guys decide on which is the better watch for you. I want you guys to enjoy your smartwatch. I want you to spend your money wisely. And if that means answering a few comments, I'm more than happy to do so. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in another video. Thank you.